Welcome to our last lesson in our Chapter 5, Relations and Functions. Today we're going to look at 5.7, Interpreting Graphs of Linear Functions. So we've been looking at dealing with functions in terms of domain, range, dependent, independent, rate of change, all this stuff. We want to bring in two new terms here. Now these terms are going to help us understand our graph a little better and really help us when we're looking at uh, graphing our functions. It's called the horizontal and vertical intercepts. So our horizontal intercept is where our graph intersects the horizontal axes. In other term words, if our y is 0, what is our value for x? And then of course we have our vertical intercept, the point where the graph intercepts the vertical or y-axis. So again, if our x is 0, what's our y value? So for the horizontal intercept, we would have 0 and a number. And for the y-intercept, we would have a number and 0. These are two nice points that we can use to figure out from a formula of our function. And they're also really nice points to graph, which allows us to draw an accurate sketch of our function. So let's take a look at what we already know about our functions. If I give you a graph, and here's a nice one right here, we have to be able to identify certain things. The dependent and independent variables, our horizontal and vertical intercepts, which we just looked at, our domain and range, and finally our rate of change. Once we know these things, we can easily create a formula from this particular graph. So that's our identifying things. What's our dependent variable? Our dependent variable, that's what's on our y-axis. Our y-axis runs up and down, vertical, and our idea, our axis, our variable is temperature. And then let's look at our independent variable. Our independent variable is what's on our x-axis our horizontal axes, which is right here. So our variable is time. Now let's look at those new ideas, the horizontal intercept. So the horizontal intercept is essentially, if our y is 0, where does our graph cross our x-axis? And it's right here crosses the axis at positive 1. Vertical intercept. Well, if our x is 0, where does our line cross the y-axis? And it's right there. So this is the point negative 3. Domain. So our domain is all about our x values. So what x values work for this particular graph? Now it isn't a continuous graph in both directions so we're not going to have information below and above the x. What values of x work? Well they look like they're all positive values. Our graph starts at 0, continues to 1, 2, 3, 4, continue in infinite space. So our x has to be larger than 0. Now again, with domain and range, we have to ask ourselves one more question. Could it be equal to 0? And on our graph, we look. Our dot here at 0 is colored in. So that means, yes, it could be equal to 0. So I'm going to say my x is greater or equal to 0. Now let's look at the range. And the range is all about our y values. So on this graph, our y values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, goes up to infinity as well. So it looks like our y values, our y has to be greater or larger than negative 3. And again, we ask ourselves, could we be equal to negative 3? And yes, because that dot is filled in, we could be equal to it. Finally, our rate of change. So 
So we looked at this in terms of our change in our range divided by our change in our domain. So the first thing I do is choose two points. Well, I'm going to switch colors here, go to blue. I'm going to choose this point right here. I'm going to choose this point right here. Now the reason I choose these points is because they fall on the line. That's must. But they also hit the corner of my grid paper. So corner of my grid paper means it's going to be at the exact numbers. If I was to choose this point right here, well, that's kind of in between 1 and 2. Do I know its exact value? I can probably guess pretty accurately that it's probably 1.5, but I don't know for sure. When I cross the corner of my grid, I know for sure this is a value of 0 on my y and 1 on my x. So my rate of change is starting with the change in my range. So I start at negative 3, I go up to 0. So I go up 3 values divided by my change in my domain. I start at 0 and I go up to 1. So 3 divided by 1 equals 3. So I've got my dependent independent variables. I've got my horizontal and vertical axes, or intercepts, my domain, my range, and my rate of change. Now if I wanted to, I could take this one next step and talk about what's the formula. So I know my generic version of my formula is y equals kx. But in this particular graph, I am not crossing the y-intercept at 0. So I have this idea of plus b being my y-intercept. I've identified all these things from my graph already. My y variable was temperature. So t, temperature, equals my k. My k is my rate of change, which is 3. My x variable is time. Now I don't want to use capital T for time because I already used it for temperature. So I'm going to use maybe h. h hours, it's the unit for time. Plus b, where's across my y-intercept? Already got that, negative 3. So a formula for this particular variation would be t equals 3h minus 3. Okay, let's move on. We've got the information from a graph. Now let's take our function and graph it. So sketch the graph of a linear relation, f at x equals 3x minus 2. So how do we do this? Essentially, we're going to find our x and our y-intercept. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to find our x-intercept. For our x-intercept, we have to basically set our y equal to 0. Now if we look at our formula, it's f at x equals 3x minus 2. Remember this f at x? Another term for y. So we can look at this as y equals 3x minus 2. So if I set my y to 0, I'm going to have 0 equals 3x minus 2. Now I just have to simply isolate my x. I'm going to start by bringing the 2 over. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So 2 equals 3x. Now I'm going to divide by 3. And my x is equal to 2 thirds. So the point that I just made on my graph is my x value is 2 thirds, my y value is 0. I chose y to be 0, when y is 0, x is 2 thirds. Now let's get my y-intercept. And of course this is where I set my x to 0. So I've got y equals 3 times 0 minus 2. Well, 3 times 0 is 0, so y 
equals minus 2. So the point I just made was an x of 0 and a y of negative 2. From here, I can now take these two points and graph them. So I'm going to set up a y-axis. This is just a sketch, so I'm allowed to use my pencil. It doesn't be on graph paper. Now I do know that I've got a y of negative 2. So I can't start my x-axis down here because I'm going to have 0 as my lowest point, but I have to go below 0. So I'm going to start it somewhere along there. So this is 0. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And it's a sketch, so I am trying to make my ticks as even as possible. I'm going to have to go up to an x value of 2 thirds. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. Now let's plot it. Take a new color. I've got an x of 2 thirds, which is 1 and a half right there, when y is 0. There's my first point. Now I've got a 0 on x, negative 2 on the y. 0 on the x, negative 2 on the y, right there. And now I can take my straight edge and I can draw my line. And there we go. We have got a formula here. f at x equals 3x minus 2. And again, from my graph, I could do the same thing. What's my dependent independent variables? What's my horizontal vertical intercept? What's my domain? What's my range? What's my rate of change? Okay, let's change. go to our textbook, please. And let's go to page 319. Let's go 2 from the A's, 6 from the B's, and 1 from the C's.